Welcome to Kitsugi.com's coverage of Total War Warhammer 2 from PAX West. So we were gifted two scenarios here. We have Destroyer and Rod of Corruption. Uh, you're going to be seeing Rod of Corruption. It's the easier of the two. It features the Skaven versus the Lizardmen. Uh, James Watts, my co-worker, will be playing. He uh, goes by Pirate Jeet, and he'll be playing on the side of the Skaven. You'll be seeing all kinds of cool Skaven bits and bobs going through, destroying one another, and blowing up other things. Uh, I'll be providing some light gameplay commentary, but mostly you'll just be watching the, the video because it is pretty fantastic. So I hope you enjoy, and please subscribe and like the video. Unblemished, pure. It must be gifted the touch touch of pestilence. That the reptile things attack me for this is blasphemy. Lead me to the crimson skull so I make it powder and restore my rod of corruption. Yes, yes. Let us begin. Yes, yes. So what you're going to be seeing here is James has paused the game, and he's going to go over his units. This is uh, pretty common if you don't know what you have in the game. So he's going to pause it, and you're going to see he's looking at his units. Those are Plague Monks and Plague Monk Sensor Bearers, uh, basically flanking infantry. You can see down on the bottom there, he's just looking through Halberd Infantry, Halberd Infantry. This is his Hell Pit, Incarnation. Uh, it's a powerful, strong melee unit. Um, he's got... These <coughs> he's got these ranged catapults. Uh, Hell pit abomination again. He's looking at that, and he's just just taking a look at everything. He's got his storm vermin in the front. He's got his uh, all of his expendable infantry skirmishers in the front there with those gutter runners that are very fast, in and out, eager to to go through more storm storm vermin. And he's just examining the initial placing of units. Uh, rat ogres on the right there. Those are cavalry units, basically heavy cavalry that are easy to flank. Uh, he's got a doom wheel right there that he's looking at. Doom wheel is heavy, 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 heavy cavalry type unit. Uh, it does a lot of damage against infantry. And now he's going to go have a look at the enemy dispersion here. And then we'll see what the enemies bring. This is a, a sort of a slower scenario than the one that I have played through. Uh, it's a little more defensive. There's not as much fighting involved, so... Bear with us in the first few minutes here. I'll go ahead and shut up, and you guys can watch as he sort of begins ready, to, ready. His, to distribute his troops. Council's command. Right away he's tasked his heavy catapults to try and destroy those enemy skirmishers, the flankers, so that he doesn't have to worry about defending his flanks once he does get his units in. And now he's going to take the vast majority of his infantry, group them up, and he's going to assign them in a line. we see some enemy infantry coming in from the right side. We had been warned about this particular bit of gameplay. We had seen it before. So he's going to use those rat ogres on the right side there, the heavy infantry rat ogres. And the doom wheel, of course. As his main infantry force sort of slowly pushes up through the middle. And now, uh, now those enemy uh, armies have seen him. They know that he's there. And lizard men are going to not the charge. Both of those are cavalry units. They're at a full charge right now. And they've got a heavy unit in the middle there as well. And they're going to lead him. So they're going to engage. He's trying to run those skirmishers out here and engage those skirmishers. And that is a big, strong crowd. There goes fire and those catapults. 
firing on enemy missile infantry. And I think I missed it, but he dropped a spell in the back back there. Uh, in this in this game, the winds of chaos, which you can see on the right side, there, uh, number thirty is how much kind of mana you think it's like mana you have. The black flag is looking pretty secure, and already we're seeing a pretty big advantage in speed here. Without even any real major conflicts going on, the wizard men have already, wizard men's reinforcing units have already broken. They have one flea, one in full flea, the one that is, I'm not sure where they're dying or not, it'll be around this time, we'll see if they're a good dino fighter as well. He's in the center of the water, but there he is down there fighting against that, that uh, unit of what? <laughs> There's Zip Park, he is the one of the heroes in the army, and he's gonna use a hero ability. He's gonna fire at the enemy, the Doom Rocket. He's a little bit out of range, he's gotta move up a bit. Once he's in range, he's gonna fire that Doom Rocket right into those charging enemy forces. The right flank attack has been broken. And now the enemy the lizard men are coming into missile range. Firing back on our skirmishers. Looks like this catapults for a little bit out of place there. We didn't quite get them into the spot. We wanted them in. Then comes the enemy heavy to engage on those skirmishers. That is going to be a bad day for those skirmishers. Somebody dropped a spell off to the left side there, probably in for his flanking units, but it missed entirely. Those two units that are breaking and running away will have to rally later on. But they are using the valuable resources from the scheme of army. We're going to move up that Ceradon. Sorry, that even Ceradon. Oh, infantry. Because right now that Ceradon is absolutely tearing through the ranks. We'll keep shooting at our own infantry there. Will the Lord pop up? This means that our legendary Lord has engaged in combat and is fighting. He's pretty well surrounded by his own units, so he's not too worried about it. But those temple guards, he's worried about those temple guards. So. And now he's going to disengage those right flank units that were there to repel the surprise attack. And bring them back towards the center. Actually, he does have a unit of stolen vermin in there, which is a new unit of three troops. So he's interested in it. Meanwhile, the, the Doom Wheel is going to roll its way on into his, his enemy infantry and just completely the other way. He's going to use that Hellpit Abomination engaging with the Lizard Man. He's right now in here. The Doom Wheel does such a good job of just flying into the enemy and doing that. There's another unit of stolen vermin. Doom is uh, doing damage, causing doom. A lot of units not engaged in battle right now, I think. Uh, maybe a little more focus on, on, the, on the doom wheel than need, needed to be. But uh, the lizard men are pretty much broke at this point. You can see on the top there, there is a set of two crossed swords at the top, and they show a bar of which has an half of red, half of orange. The orange half is your half. It's a victory counter, so it's going to tell you whether or not you're close to victory. And if you are close to victory, that will continue to go towards the right side. If you're losing it, it will go towards the left side, and it will go towards the right. Right now, this is really just a mop-up operation. As you can see, there's storm women back there trying to chase those units off the map. Still have those catapults working. Maybe hitting as much of our own infantry as anyone else is using. They're firing into that. No. Yeah, okay. this is all the really rough with the lizard men. And then we're getting torn apart by those heavies. And they do break and run. You can see the lizard man's commander there on the left. 
exploding on that throne. Now, just like in Total War Warhammer 1, you can't a commander kill will end the scenario. Either for you or your enemies, you can't just throw your commander directly into the battle. As we watch the closing minutes here, there's not a whole lot left. To, to see, this is mostly just mopping up now. We get to see a little bit more action from the story. And that Saradon is still causing problems as it goes across. It does look like the right side sort of uh, went away for uh, poor James here. This is, you know, the beauty of Total War is that sometimes you really can't manage all your fronts. They finally did get that set on the great there. You can see it lumbering away there on the battlefield. Something else is I didn't, we didn't get to see it, but it's nearly dead and it's fleeing, fleeing off the battlefield. And there you go, claim the victory. Now, as usual, we'll see a post-victory screen. Uh, it was a Pyrrhic victory. We both won Pyrrhic victories, um, unfortunately. But you'll see here a, a post-game victory screen. You can see how well James did versus the Lizard Men. Uh, not as well as I had hoped he would. And uh, stay tuned for another minute here. We got a little bit more info coming up after. Well, that was Total War Warhammer 2 that we've just played. You won? Yep, barely got the Skaven. Dual victories here with a Pyrrhic victory there and a, a Pyrrhic victory here. Yep. What do you think? I liked it. It'll be nice to see more of the game, so we'll new, see what happens. New races, Skaven, Lizardmen, yep. and like the High Skaven Elves against, and Dark Elves. I like the Skaven against the Lizardmen. It's a lot of fun. You enjoyed? I enjoyed it. I played as the, the Dark Elves against the High Watching Elves. Watching my Doom Wheel smash into the Lizardmen was awesome. One of those moments you can only get in Warhammer. Just say hello, and tell us yeah. who you are, and then... Uh, Hi, I'm Michael, I'm on the community team for Total War. Um, we've just been playing some Total War Warhammer 2 with you guys. It's been very fun. Um, so just a, a few questions that you had on the campaign. Yes. Yeah. So the way the uh, occupation worked in Warhammer 1 was that anyone who had a certain race, specific trait, so for example the dwarves, could only capture territory that they were moving into, so they could only take green to and dwarven territory. We've reworked that in Warhammer 2, so basically the way it works now is that we have a climate system. So for example, um, if your dwarves are moving into an Empire city, they can actually take those human settlements, but they're going to have massive debuffs to all the stuff, and it's going to be really difficult for them to hold on to. So you can feasibly take over all the territory that you want, but you want to make sure that you're taking the ones that are sort of specialised in what you're after as well. Okay. That's a nice change. And when will we hear more about the combined campaign between the two games, the Super Campaign? Yeah, so we're, we're releasing that shortly after the game's launched. Um, it's going to be a free piece of content for anyone who owns both games. But basically, the way it works is we've taken the old world, we've attached the new world on top of it, we've had to trim a few of the regions off from the, the top and bottom um, just to fit it all on. But any of the races that you're able to play in either of the games, you can play as now on the combined campaign map. And if you're playing as an old race, so say if you're playing as the Empire, you're going to have all the cool new mechanics that come from Warhammer 2 as well. So those guys are able to go on treasure hunts, they're able to, to use the, uh, the new systems that they play with from Warhammer 2 as well. Oh, nice. Any more questions? No, don't think so. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you.